Hello, KM6LYW radio viewers. We're going to do a little more hacking on the DigiPy today. We're working on version 1.5, so we're adding new features. This is the cool part of the development cycle. If you're not already familiar with the DigiPy, that's the Raspberry Pi Zero you see on your screen. It's a $10 single board computer. And it's used as a data transceiver for amateur radio. So you need to be in amateur radio and you need to be into digital or data modes. Uh, so you hook this thing up to radios and you can do email, you can do SMS, packet radio, all kinds of cool stuff. So we're adding a new, some, some new modes, some more interesting modes. Uh, some of these are based on Adair because this is, this is again, this is only a $10 computer. So we're going to, you guys are going to help me out and add some, some new modes to this. In fact, I want to talk about WSJTX FT8 mode. This is an HF uh, contact mode, extremely uh, low signal to noise ratio stuff. And we'll see if we can get it to work on this $10 single board computer that we're calling the DigiPi. You can build the DigiPi at uh, Krager.org slash digipi um, everything you need uh, to buy and wire up is is here so if you want to build one get it there uh, but before we start getting into the details here i gotta thank marcus and miguel thank you guys you are the contributors for september so far it's fantastic if it wasn't for you guys this really wouldn't be possible and i don't want to understate the rest of you guys helping out not only you know financially at patreon.com slash km6liw but you know you're helping the news groups so uh, we're helping each other out uh, you know this this channel is really about open source software and the community driving that so thank you guys patreon.com slash km6liw so back to the DigiPi, we're working on new features. Uh, FT8, as you can see, is actually in the uh, the web-based menu here for the DigiPi. Remember, there's no keyboard or monitor for this. This is going to be a headless solution, something you could use in the field. Super simple. And there is WSJTX8 is there now, and it is in TNC mode at the moment. I don't think I've got FT8 running. Let me turn this off and uh, this is the, the command prompts on the DigiPi. We'll get to those in a minute. Um, resetting the DigiPi. Hopefully, it'll take a second. I'm going to turn this off. It'll take a second. Yeah, the, the eye gate didn't uh, want to clear because I actually had FT8 running in the background. But we want to start this from scratch because I want to show you guys some things. I want to show you guys how the CPU works on this. Um, you know, how we can change process priorities to get some of this more advanced software running on a simple Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, let me refresh our display here. So we are on a clean slate. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the WSJTX FT8 service. <clears throat> and it's going to fire up the FT8 the graphical application in like a virtual display that's embedded in the Pi. And we're going to use a web browser to actually see the application running. Um, <clears throat> we're going to look at the command prompts here. <clears throat> and you notice WSJTX is taking uh, almost 100% of the CPU starting up. And and to be honest, that's what I really, really want you guys to help me out with is why does J, WSJTX burn so much CPU just to start? Um, I've done some polling or some stack traces on this and it is just talking to all the sound cards over and over, um, like not actually listening to them, but you know, verifying that they're there, you know, a million times a second. And it just burns a ton of CPU. You can see it's at 98% right now. And the CPU is just idle. Um, so basically, in order for FT8 to work, you have to wait a while for it to settle down. And I really don't know what it's doing. Maybe you guys can help me with that. So let's check it out. Let's, I'm going to click on the FT8 link here, and it's going to connect me uh, to the virtual display that's now running on the Raspberry Pi Zero. It's also connected to a ICOM 7300. You guys might be familiar with this radio. We're going to see if we can do some FT8 stuff. I'm going to make this uh, it's actually zoomed in just so you guys can see it. This is our virtual uh, display that's running on the Pi Zero. And as you can see, FT8 is just now starting up. Um, again, it's burning a ton of CPU for, for no real reason according to the stack traces. So if we sit here and wait for a minute, it'll actually idle out and, and just be doing nothing. So I configured it so the waterfall isn't there, or at least it's not in the in the display. Um, I configured it so the virtual display is actually running in the CPU nice cycles. So the, the virtual display is actually running at nice level five. And the more important process like WSJTX and the JT9 audio decoder is running with normal process priority. So I'm kind of sitting here waiting for the CPU to become idle because uh, WSJTX is still burning CPU for no reason. Um, I've got it starting up so it's not actually monitoring any frequencies uh, just to get so we can get by this this little window of it 
just going nuts. And maybe while we're waiting for that, we can talk about something else I discovered in the Raspberry Pi Zero. I didn't know if you guys noticed this, but the Pi Zero, if you're using Raspbian, is actually hobbled. I mean, actually, it, it, its performance is, is cut by 30%. Now, this is a 1 gigahertz board, and by Raspbian, by default, uh, only runs it at 700 megahertz. Um, the, the CPU frequency scaler in the Linux kernel has basically been disabled, and it's running at the slowest frequency of 700 megahertz. Uh, we can actually change that to get a little more CPU performance out of this. In fact, it was just awful until I uh, did this. If we, if we go into Sys Devices System CPU, CPU zero and CPU freak. I know that's a long path. Uh, if we go into this directory and then we cat the contents of a file called scaling underscore cur underscore freak. Uh, we can see it is at 1000 uh, or it's at one gigahertz, which is where we want it. Um, if we look at the, if we echo power save out to the same uh, variable, out to, actually out to scaling underscore governor, um, this is how it boots up and if we look at the frequency now, it's at 700 megahertz. So when this thing boots up, it's at 700 megahertz for no reason because it's 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 in power save mode, which is great if you're trying to save power. But if you need to run a CPU intensive app like FT8 or FL Digi, uh, we need this thing up at its spec rate of uh, uh, one gigahertz. So that's how you fix this on the Raspberry Pi Zero to get the CPU performance to, to, to something that can actually run an app. And in fact, if you're building the DigiPy and you're using the DigiPy image, um, I put this into uh, performance mode. In fact, put it in performance mode. You just echo performance out to scaling governor. And now when we look at the frequency, it's back up at one gigahertz. So uh, the, if you have the DigiPy image, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff because I'm doing this for you in the startup scripts for FT8. Um, and let's take a look at that. Let's see if it's settled down. Now look at the CPU. We're at 95.3% idle. WSJTX is only burning 2% of the CPU. So whatever it was doing with the audio cards, it seems to be satisfied now. And we can really start using the app. Uh, what I'm going to do is hit quit, and I'm going to do top... What I'm going to do is watch the three processes that we're interested in, and that is WSJTX, that's 13.227, and I also want to look at process JT9, which is the fast Fourier transform process. That's the one that really needs the CPU. And then I also want to look at the X-Type VNC, uh, which is the dis virtual display. Um, you'll notice it's running at nice level five. So the, the display driver only runs in available CPU cycles. It's in a, a nice processor queue. Uh, so let's just look at those three processes. Here they are in our top command. Our CPU is 93% idle. Okay, we're good to go. So let's go back over to the DigiPy. We've got FT8 running here. I want to start the monitor. I disable that by default, again, because WSJTX, you know, for whatever reason, loves to burn CPU while it's starting up. So right now we are monitoring the signals coming through on that ICOM 7300. Um, once we get a, what it does is it records a 15 second frame and then it runs a, the JT9 process against the, the recorded wave file, that's this guy. And uh, once it's complete, and if you can do that in under 15 seconds, you will see a bunch of stations showing up here. And that's exactly what we see. Um, so here comes a frame where we're looking down here, here 15, 7, 8, 9, 10, it's recording the file, and that's going to decode, and we're going to see how long it takes to decode a frame. So it's decoding right now, actually it finished instantly, uh, that was fast. If there's more, if there's a whole bunch of stations on there, you, you might want to change the decode from fast, actually it's not fast right now, let me put it on normal, set it up for normal decode speed, all right. So now there's a frames coming in, five, six, seven, eight. It's still decoding the last frame. Okay, it finished at 11 seconds. That was cool. Um, if it takes more than 15 seconds to decode a frame, you really need to go over to decode and put it in fast mode. Um, so that's what I've discovered with FT8. Maybe you guys can help me out with additional settings to make this work better. Um, so since while we're here, why don't we go ahead and make a contact? Um, I see W5. Actually, it might be easier. It's only one guy calling CQ here. I'm trying to find a guy that has a good uh, this calling CQ that has a good level, you know, so I don't so we don't have to wait, I don't have to waste your time. <laughs> Here's NR0W. Um, I'm gonna enable the transmitter. He's a plus seven. He's real close. So I'm gonna respond to his CQ. I've enabled the transmitter. 
I don't know what power level we are at. Um, we're at 35% power on the ICOM, and we are now transmitting, um, letting him know what our grid square is. This is kind of cool to see FT8 running on <laughs> the DigiPi. And what's even neater is you can do this on a cell phone. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but if you get the VNC client uh, for your cell phone, this is my phone, guys. Uh, remember, we don't want any monitors or keyboards or cables or anything. This is my <clears throat> phone doing FT8. Now, I installed the VNC client on my phone uh, for this to work. And you can do it, but you can still do it on the web browser. It's just kind of hard to type. Uh, so there it is, FT8 running on a cell phone. Just to think how cool this is in the field. All right, so NR0W has responded to my response to a CQ and has given me a signal report of negative 06, and uh, I'm giving him a roger of uh, positive 3. So he's coming in real loud, and I'm coming in just okay, I guess. Um, anything under negative 10. And he's giving me a roger, roger, and we just made the contact. All right, NR0W, um, this is our contact report. And then we can click OK. And it'll save it to the log. Now, the log's just temporary because the DigiPy uses a read-only file system, which, you know, so you can save that off if you want. But as you can see, we are decoding full frames in normal mode because the CPU is actually running at 1 gigahertz, um, unlike the stock uh, options for, uh, for Raspberry Pi on uh, Raspbian. So I'm still watching uh, things come in here. So I think this is working, you guys. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. Um, FLDG, I can kind of get to work. Uh, FLDG does like PSK31. It'll actually do CW and things like that. It'll work for a while, but sometimes it just starts writing to the SD card hard. And uh, it, it just kind of locks up. And I've got the JS8 call will start, but the audio decoders fail. Um, so I need to do something about JS8 to call to get that to work. Um, I need to work on that. But right now, I think we've got FT8 working. Um, you can save a little more CPU by disabling the uh, this graph. Um, I usually don't display this graph because the virtual display thing kind of loses its mind. This is a lot of random data. It's hard to compress. It burns some CPU. But, you know, as you can see, it's working. Um, the, tight, the virtual display is only burning 6% while it's displaying the uh, this graph. But you can always close this. Um, so this is actually a Linux desktop. Um, it's... You know, I'm not selling it as that, but you can, you, know, you can open new windows. You can, you know, you have a command prompt here. Uh, this is the DigiPy. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, so, and again, we're all doing all of this in a web browser. Of course, we could do all of this on a cell phone um, as a result of that. So this is FT8 running on the DigiPy. Well, guys, thank you for watching. Um, maybe if you get some ideas, you can help me out here um, on how to get FLDG working or JS8 call working. I think FT8 is working to my satisfaction on this $10 single board Raspberry Pi Zero. How cool is that? And uh, so, again, KM6LYW on patreon.com please contribute if you can of course like and subscribe on youtube we've got a ton of subscribers i think we're almost to 500 subscribers so if you can help me out go ahead and subscribe uh, i try and do a video every week and then uh, of course if you're on patreon you get uh, immediate access to early release software including all the software you're looking at right here if you're into amateur radio and digital modes again this is craig km6lyw in cool california and uh, i'm clear thanks guys